Hello everyone. So uh, we're going to dive into another live coding session as usual. And uh, if you recall, last week uh, we ended off uh, sort of halfway through piecing together a couple of things. We had put together a game manager class and a scene class, and these two things are going to work together. Um, if you remember, the game manager uh, is basically going to be like sort of the container for our game's life cycle. This thing's responsible for like kind of starting the game and um, managing scenes within the game. It holds on to our clock and the window that we're running within. And there is a scene inside the game that, um, that contains... Um, most of what we want to show on screen and those scenes consist of the MVP matrix which is basically defining where sort of our camera is we don't really have a, a class or concept of a camera yet but that's it's more or less defining where where our um, where our camera is looking at any given moment and a physics world um, this doesn't necessarily need to be in here, but I decided to pack it in here because we're making physics games, so it might as well, each scene probably should have some sort of physics world. And of course, this scene has a series of abstract um, or pure virtual functions here um, that we are going to make use of this time around. So we're going to be making uh, a class that inherits from scene this week where we start to fill in some of these functions and actually use them for something. I realized the last live coding session was probably pretty abstract because we didn't really accomplish anything outside of writing some code and talking about some things. So um, hopefully this will be a little bit gratifying. Um, so now in putting together um, a class that inherits from scene, what we're really aiming to do is to take a whole bunch of the behavior from main.cpp and move it into that class so that all the stuff sort of about the gravity and like stars and planets scenes that we have here have been moved into this space where we can just sort of um, contain all of the stuff relating to our application into one class uh, and it's not like just strewn about our program this way. So what I'm going to start do doing here is um, make myself a new class. I'm just going to call it Assignment 3. Um, cool. And in fact, for this one, I'm going to go without a CPP file. Um, it's really sort of a personal decision. Doesn't really doesn't really matter too much exactly what you do with this one. But um, let's see, what am I all going to need in here? Um, well, we'll see as we go. Um, so if you remember, uh, you want to use, well, of course, I'm going to need scene at least if I want to be able to do that, I suppose. So let's bring scene in. Okay, so... If you remember, um, C++ inheritance is a little bit more complicated um, than some other inheritance um, syntax that you may have seen. Because uh, C Sharp, of course, this would look more like this, right? So where assignment three derives from scene. Uh, but in C++, we have to have this public keyword on here. Um, and to be honest, I don't think I've ever really inherited a class that didn't have um, the public keyword on here. My understanding is that when public is stated here, it means to make the um, the methods that are inherited from scene also public, rather than if you were to change this to something else and it would make them hidden. Um, probably should double check that with Scott. I'm sort of saying from memory, so there's a good chance that I like totally don't remember what I'm talking about. Um, so this assignment three class. Um, so what we're going to do with this one is, um, let's, I don't know, let's say these are private. Um, okay, so this game object business we're not talking about just yet. 
So we're going to basically make a space here where we are moving over uh, some members from main. Like basically we're going to have our planet body texture, star body texture. So um, you'll remember all of these variables from over here, right? So now we're holding pointers to all of these things here, which is a minor difference from how things are sort of working in, in this one. It, it, honestly, it's mostly um, sort of a personal choice at the moment that you do that, but um, it's, uh, it's kind of fine to do it either way in most, most situations. Um, but what we want to do here to sort of fill this class out, if I were to try and build this right now, for example, actually, I'm going to try that. I'm going to hit F6 and I'll see what it does because it should complain to me. Nope, build succeeded. All right. So, okay, pure virtual functions maybe are okay here. So in any case, what, I, what I'm gonna need to do here is define a couple of things. So each one of the functions here that I had defined as abstract, I am now going to make into um, a function declaration. Now, again, since I have decided to make this all just in this .h file so that it's nice and easy to read, um, I'm going to uh, just put these in like I would with my CPP file. Um, and how about I order them a little bit more nicely so that they sort of go in the, the uh, order that they would get called. Um, lastly, I'm going to do one little thing, which in my putting this together, I couldn't find a nicer way to do this. So, um, Scott may have better advice for you on this one than I have, but, um, I found that it was necessary to make an empty constructor that takes a game manager and passes it to the scene constructor. Because if you recall from scene, um, this scene requires that a game is, is passed in here. Um, so I found that that was, that was something that, um, I should do. Now, um, we could potentially get by with, you know, by doing something different here, but, um, yeah, anyhow, that, uh, that was how it worked out for me. Um, you may fool around with this and you'll find something else that works. Um, it's a little rough edge that that I don't particularly like here, that it has to sort of sit in there and kind of do nothing, but um, I'm not too worried about it. In any case, so this is the body of what our Assignment 3 class looks like. So um, you were probably wondering a whole bunch last week, like what am I getting up to with this whole scene business and this virtual stuff and whatever. So the intent here is that when you inherit from scene, you define each one of these functions to say what your scene is going to do, how it's going to behave, and you can define whatever members that you want for your scene to have in it, and that's cool. Um, so now, these, as we talked about last week, sort of break down specific moments in gameplay that we can kind of hook into that is all handled by the game manager, and I'm going to pop open the game manager CPP, because um, if you recall, we had our um, our begin scene code. So you have scene begin that runs. Um, then you enter into the main loop, which runs this whole like while loop is controlling like the scenes gameplay loop. So where you sort of cycle through handling events and updating and rendering, and then at some point if the scene um, breaks out, if update causes it to quit or some event causes it to quit then end scene will run which ultimately causes scene.end and so these functions that we're defining here are the ones that are being called um, throughout that cycle so we're going to start porting some code over main dots over from main.cpp in order to 
um, you know, give give us this specialized behavior and really offload um, a lot of what our code needs to do over here uh, into that space. So I'm going to start off by um, moving a bunch of uh, no, actually, let's let's start small. So I'm just going to look over like what are some things in our start now. We realize that some of this stuff has been covered by game manager, for example, like because when I copy when I made my game manager, I moved over a bunch of stuff from start here. Um, so you'll notice one major difference between begin game and start, and it's that this MVP matrix is not being set in this in this game manager version. That's something that I'm going to want to do for myself in my assignment because sort of my framework code, like all this reusable code, my game manager doesn't necessarily know how I want my camera to be set up. But when I'm putting my scene together, I sure do. Um, I know that when I'm um, putting this together, sorry, I'm just going to include matrix. Um, when I'm putting my scene together, I know roughly how I'm going to want this to appear. So I'm going to make sure that that matrix is getting set. And on that subject, um, there's some constants here that I could probably move that would uh, that would help. Um, so there's a couple there, and there's a couple here. Let's grab those ones. And oh yeah, let's grab the window title too. Sure. All right, so I have some constants over here now. Now, I'm just going to use these. You'll notice that I was using them. It's just that over here, um, I was calling start. And of course, start was passing in x, max, x min, x max, y min, y max. And I was filling those with these, with these properties, or these uh, defines. So I'm just going to put them in directly here. I might as well. And this viewport, um, the pixel width and pixel height, I now have to get from somewhere else. Um, if you'll recall, scene.h gives us access to game as a protected member. So we can get at our game manager uh, here if we, if we need to. Um, and I'm going to need to do just that because inside my game manager is my window which I'll have to get using get window, but I can get my width and height from there. So I can use game, um, hmm, uh, one sec. We'll see, it seems like the compiler is giving me some trouble and I might have to figure out exactly what it's, uh, get width. all right, what is it not like? Manager scene game pointer to incomplete type. Um, okay, I bet that it doesn't like this because I need to include window because this is returning me a window. Um, so let me get that. Is that not what it's interested in? Okay. Interesting. Well, I am going to need window eventually, so I suppose there's no harm in holding on to that. Um, oh, I don't actually have game manager in yet. I'm guessing that's the problem. Um, sure, and get width is complaining because it has no member. Okay, um, I wrote this slightly differently in my version, I believe, because in this copy of the code that we put together, the, that is actually public, width is public, so I'm just going to make that available there, and we'll get the height like this. 
So that lets us um, get the width and the height of our window, which will be set up separately um, from there. And then that gives us everything that we need to set up our MVP matrix. Um, so that's one job. Now, so you'll recall, again, I was comparing begin game um, and start. Now we filled in all of those things. So all the code that was in here has been handled somewhere else. I'm just going to completely get rid of this start function. I don't think I need it anymore. Um, we'll get back to the point where this is, this is looking good. But for now, let's just focus on going through, knocking out all the stuff that, you know, um, that we've covered somewhere else. So now I realized that I once upon a time had this concept of loading assets separately and I've kind of rolled that into start. That was, um, you could really do it either way, um, but sort of part way through this, I realized that that might just be more complexity than I needed from this. So um, anyway, I'm just going to incorporate that into my begin, right? Because I'm just gonna make sure that I do that after setting some stuff up and that's fine. Um, so there's a couple little things that I'm gonna do in here. For one, I wanna set up my clock's time scale. Um, you'll see that I just can't set clock directly. I used to have clock in my main right here, but that's not the case anymore. Um, like with my window, I have to go through my game because the game manager is the thing that owns the clock and it gives me a way to get it. So I'm going to say, okay, get clock. And I'm going to want to set or okay, I don't actually have a thing for that. So I can just set the time scale directly. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to leave that alone. Um, and then I'm going to want to um, do some things to be able to uh, produce the textures that I'm that I'm into. Um, so now I have pointers to textures here, um, which is fine. Um, we could do this kind of either way, honestly. Hmm, let me see. Is there a reason that pointer to a texture would be bad here? No. Here's what I'll do. I'm just going to use textures directly. I don't think there's a problem. Um, and just as we with the other things that we need to get from the window, I'm going to make sure that I sort of fetch the window. Um, what does it not like about this? Um, oh, yeah, sure. Needs a hero form. There we go. Okay, so we're getting the renderer from the window to set up this texture with, and we can do the same thing down here. Now, you may also be noticing at this point that we are now getting the window quite a few times. So um, we might want to do a couple of things here. Um, so I'm just going to throw this in. So for begin here, I'm just going to get the window one time. I'm going to call game get window. I'm going to hold on to that. Um, and then that way, any time that game arrow get window comes up, I can just use window and I don't have to fetch it all over again. This is not like an insanely large performance improvement or anything like that, but uh, it just keeps my syntax a little bit lighter. Um, our window class does not have a way to set the title. Interesting. It's not really a big problem or anything, but um, let's give it one. Uh, okay, so what did I do in my version? I just have... Oh, well, yeah, I guess everything's public, so... All right, fine. Let's do it the easy way. And um, I had just my window title variable here. So now... 
ideally you get around to going back through your classes once you're sort of finished prototyping some things and put in getters and setters. Um, for example, uh, mine looks something like this. So I have all these functions that are dedicated to just getting and setting things and then all you really need to do is move your variables outside being public and these things will all become private and then you can control your access to those things through these. Um, so this is ideally um, how you do this and how I sort of did it in my uh, more complete solution here, but I'm not going to take the time to sort of go through um, all of that process. That's um, pretty classic object-oriented programming, encapsulating, um, encapsulating your objects well. Um, so that's something that you should get into the practice of doing rather than just leaving variables um, public all the time. That's fine. So, okay. So, I'm just going to look over this. So I've got these things. I'm adding bodies to the world. Um, I'm creating their textures. I'm creating their bodies. Um, cool. So where am I at here? What do I need yet? Uh, let's look in our main, see what else we haven't done yet. So I've already got these to add velocity. I'll close that over. Yeah, I think we basically have everything that we need in our begin. Um, so handle event for now um, is not something that we desperately need. There's there's no SDL events that we really need to respond to, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put a little stub in here to say and not probably um, like what might go on in here. Um, so looking into our main, so let's scrap load assets and we'll knock it off. Um, so there's one more that's gone. Um, actually looking to some of our other functions here. So we've got our, um, oh, I was not clearing the star texture. Um, interesting. Okay. Well, it's good that I discovered that. So uh, let's make sure to do that this time around. So star texture dot free. So as you can see, even even the best are tripped up by stupid forgetting to um, mistakes where you just forget to um, clean up after yourself. And stop, if you will recall, we don't even really have to do anything here because when the scene when the game ends, um, the game manager will automatically um, free the window and kill SDL's resources. So stop is already implemented, so that's gone. So we've got stop and unload assets that both went away. Awesome. Don't need that anymore. So we're really down to just having our update here. So then again, it's like, well, okay, so what does our update consist of in the game manager? What parts of this are we already doing? I recognize this chunk. This is pretty familiar. This is old as far as the code, code that we've been putting together so far. Looks awfully familiar, right? So this chunk of the code is basically already in our game manager, we're just slotting in what happens um, in this update and where this renders. Now, so I'm sure that you can sort of see here that we have done a couple of different things here. We put update and render code together here, which isn't necessarily um, wrong or bad, but in most engines you will find that they're separate. So, um, oh yes, there's one other thing in our game manager is that of course, um, we're in our, uh, oh no, that's right. So our gameplay code is what you'd usually find in update. So that's where I'm going to move this stuff. So I'm going to take this and put it into our assignment threes update. Now, 
of course, this time we have delta time passing in here because um, our clock is being updated automatically by the game manager. So um, the delta time is being passed in um, automatically uh, to scene update here. So we can just access that as delta time in this context. We don't even really need to go to the clock for it. Um, so that's all of our gameplay code right there. And, oh yeah, I guess if I was going to put things in order, update should go before render. And then lastly, we have some rendering code. Um, so looking at main yet again, we have this if window isn't minimized, clear, draw, this stuff. Well, Game Manager, again, um, is handling some of that for us. It's handling the minimized stuff, it's handling window clearing, it's handling drawing. And if there's a scene set, then do the render code. Which means that if all this stuff is done for us, and all this stuff is done for us, then we can slim right down. We've just got the stuff that we really intended to do, and not all of that boilerplate. So this lends us um, like a much simpler view of what it is that we're doing. When we're beginning, we're set like we're getting our window, setting the window title, let's set up where the camera's looking, let's set up our time scale, let's load some textures and create some physics bodies and add those to the world. That's all the stuff that we need to think about. Forget all of this nonsense about, you know, um, bringing SDL online and setting up like texture filtering and like initializing the window and getting you know the the image plug-in working and starting the clock and all those things that stuff's done for us now it's already been put packed away into a class where that's just finished and we don't have to think about it so um I think we're probably at a pretty good spot to sort of give this a try, but um, let's finish cleaning up main and, uh, and get ourselves to where we're intending to go. So that gets rid of update. And uh, that leaves our main looking... Stop doing that, computer. Thank you. So that leaves our main looking pretty bare, if you ask me. Um, so we don't need any of these things anymore. We don't need any of these things anymore. Um, this doesn't have a clock. It doesn't have a matrix. It doesn't have a window to the world. Nothing. Nothing. It has none of those things. Our main doesn't need to have very many things at all. And in fact, um, I'm going to go to the lengths of just defining them in the main itself. Because there's no reason that they have to be shared between functions even. This is right down to the most the most simple that we could need from this. So I'm going to change up the defines that we have here slightly. I'm just going to paste these new ones in. So um, you'll recall maybe from where I set up game manager, you see this function, the, the constructor here, and also begin game. So these take the form where I set the pixel width and height of the window, I set whether the game should start full screened, and I'm passing in these SDL flags and image flags. So the reason that I do this is because since um, SDL and SDL image are getting set up inside Game Manager, I want to make sure that I have a way to sort of pass those libraries, the settings that they need when, they, when they're starting up. Um, so I'm, I'm going to make it a couple of defines here that um, have the values that I would normally pass into those things. So what this is going to look like is, uh, well, I guess I'm going to need to include game manager. Um, oh, geez, I don't need to include nearly as many things as I have up here, do I? Uh, let's trim this right down. Um, yeah. So let's get game manager, because we're going to need that. Don't think I'm going to need the rest of this stuff. So let's just call that game. And so that's going to take in a few things. Um, so you remember, this is, this is the form where we are just creating a game manager inside this function. So not a pointer to it, but the object itself. 
and we're going to construct it. So I'm going to give it a width. I'm going to give it a height. Um, I how far do I have to go here? Window full screen. Um, and I'm going to pass in my SDL flags. Wow, there we go. And image flags. So what this does is it creates our game manager and initializes it. So if you remember, um, this constructor basically just calls um, like it it does all the stuff that it needs to do to get set up and uh, it calls begin game immediately so we're not we're not wasting any time um, and then the second thing that we need to do here is that we need to create a scene to give to the game so that it has something to do um, so that's our assignment three and we are going to create ourselves one of those so I'm just gonna call it assignment three um, now I need to give it a pointer to a game um, since I'm just holding a game on the stack uh, or I'm just going to use this format you could for example do this a little bit differently if you had decided to make game manager a pointer uh, which you could perfectly well do uh, you could write it like this so that you're creating a new game manager and uh, you just pass a, a game into assignment three and that's a legit thing. Why don't we try that one out and see how that looks. This is a lot more familiar looking to um, you folks who sort of prefer your sort of C-sharp-ish syntax. Um, hmm. That's surprising. It should be able to do this. Oh, okay. All right. This is just Visual Studio flaking out. So once we've created the game, now notice that I have to pass the game into the scene. Now, in fact, let's just call this scene because I think that'll that'll make this read a little bit more nicely. So I have to give the game to the scene. So the scene needs to know what game it belongs to, but um, the game needs to know what scene it's gonna run. So I have to do this kind of um, both ways. So now is where I call begin scene. So begin game got called by our constructor. So begin game is up and working and like, this is meaning that the window is up and running and SDL and SDL image and all those things are sort of up and going, but we're not doing anything yet. We need the game loop to be running for this scene. Oops. So we need to call begin scene on the game manager and pass our scene in so that it knows what to do. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it my scene and um, basically what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna look weird, you're gonna go, well, why are you doing this right away? Like, obviously we don't wanna end the game right away. Um, but really what's happening here is, um, begin scene is going to enter into, oops, is going to enter into this enormous while loop. And this while loop will continue until update returns true and it causes the game to end at which point uh, the scene will end and this function begin scene will finally end so really what's going to happen when this program starts is it's going to create a game it's going to create a scene game begin scene is going to get called here and it's going to block on this function it's just going to stay inside this function until that scene says that it's over and then the code will continue on from there. It will hit end game and then the program ends. And that's what our whole program looks like from the perspective of main. If there's a game, there's a scene, do some stuff. If you, for example, had a game where you maybe wanted to do um, more things in a row, um, you know, you could have 
a situation where you had a couple of different scenes. You could have maybe, you know, you could have a windscreen and a lewd screen or something like that. So you could have like wind scene um, or, well, I guess here it would be a little bit hard to tell exactly, you know, what's going on there. But let's just say you wanted to advance into a second scene. Um, you could write this, that sort of thing. Um, and if you like to have like sort of a crisper definition here um, without declaring so many variables, uh, you could do this instead. So that you're just creating your assignment and passing it straight in. In fact, I like this the best. This looks good. So um, I'm going to give this a try at building and um, what is it not like? Update must return a value. Oh, of course. Sure. So um, I was just talking about the fact that update needs to return a Boolean value. If it returns true, then uh, the application quits out. Now for what we're doing, um, we're just, there's never anything that's going to happen in the update that should cause this scene to end. So um, yeah, we're just too legit to quit indeed so uh yeah i'm just going to return false on every update basically what this is going to mean is the only thing that will really cause this to quit is if you get an sdl event um, that signals quitting and uh, that would kill it so you could still hit the x on the window and it will cause it to stop um but there's nothing in our update um in our gameplay loop that that would suggest that the scene should end so um let me build this. Okay, build succeeded. All right, fingers crossed. If this works, I will be happy. It may be a little bit more disastrous than that, but, you know, hope for the best. Whoa, look at that. I can't believe that everything worked nicely the first time around. Okay, so here we have um, exactly the same thing that we did. So we didn't accomplish anything at all. Um, feels good, doesn't it? Um, but this is a large part of the job of the programmer. Um, much of what we do is about organizing things and keeping things neat and tidy and, um, what we call maintainable. Um, what's nice about this assignment three is that everything about specifically what you're doing for assignment three is in here. If you come to approach assignment four with your code structured like this, the huge majority of what you will be doing can be written in a class that looks just like assignment three, but you can set up what different, you know, any different members that you need. Um, you know, your begin and your update and your render might look a little bit different. Um, but for the most part, it's the same kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to end this off with, um, I got a few minutes left. I'm just at about 38 minutes, so I'm going to spend about 10 minutes just doing some, some additional stuff to, to kind of uh, add little, little bits and pieces here that, that you could possibly have, um, that maybe make things a little bit, a little bit nicer for you. Um, so actually one sec, I'm going to need to, um, open up one of my other projects here. Do do. Yeah, let's, you're not going to get to see this one, but. Sure. So, um, now you'll notice here that we have planet body and planet texture. Now we've had this all along, but, um, when you have two objects that are very closely related like these things are, um, it's often best to group them into one object that sort of owns both. Uh, and you've certainly seen what that object is called most of the time in other engines. Um, you use it in Unity all the time. It's a game object. A thing with a physics body and a thing with a texture that renders, that sounds a lot like a game object to me. There's 
a hundred different ways that you could approach putting a game object together. Well, maybe not a hundred, but there's probably four or five. Um, so I'm just going to put together a very simple one so that we can think about our objects as game objects, just so that we can, you know, um, keep it straight in our heads and not get bogged down in details about, like, how um, these things sort of work together. It's perfectly acceptable for you to, to work like this for this sort of scale of project, but once you start getting large numbers of game objects, it starts to get a little bit harder uh, to think about um, keeping these things separate. You start to want them to be together because it makes everything a little bit easier for you. So I'm going to go ahead and make a class for the game object. And... So, now I'm going to be using those forward includes that I was talking about a bunch in here because uh, I can get away with it. Um, so, I'm going to do things much like I was showing you uh, in terms of encapsulating things. Uh, I might as well try and do it right if I'm going to do it at all. So, I have a body pointer, a scene pointer, and a texture pointer that are all inside this game object. That could be done differently, but it's a good enough way to come at this. So I've got all of these things available to me within the context of this game object, but since these are all by default private, um, I need to include some properties to make it possible for me to get at um, those objects. And as usual, I'm going to make myself two constructors. So one that is responsible for just creating the object and another that calls init. So you have a pretty good idea of what our init function looks like. And I'm going to just sort of paste those in. So you'll notice that here I have init, render, and update. And probably an important fact here is that I'm making these virtual. So now, just like the virtual functions in scene here, uh, these can be overridden to, uh, to specialize the behavior of game object. I'm going to put together a default game object um, where you can use it as is um, with these functions pre-programmed. But if for some reason you need a game object that behaves in a really specialized way, it's possible for you to make a subclass of game object and customize the way that these behave. So the reason that I can create sort of default behavior is I'm not I'm not doing this equals zero. They won't be pure virtual functions. They're just virtual functions. So virtual functions are those that you can override. A pure virtual function is one that doesn't even have a definition and you need to override it. So um, I'm going to go into my game object.cpp and I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. Um, I'm just going to paste in a big chunk of this file first because I think that that's, that'll make plenty of sense anyway. Okay, so I've just dropped a bunch of things in. Remember, forward includes, I've got class body, class scene, class texture in here because I only need these for the fact that I have pointers of them. But in my CPP, I'm bringing in body, scene, texture uh, here because I need to actually use these things. Um, so I have my properties here. I'm just get body, return it, get scene, return the scene, get texture, return the texture. Easy stuff, right? And when I create my game object by default, it just sets all those things to null because um, we want to make sure they're zeroed out and not garbage data. Um, and then when I call my longer constructor, it just passes over to init, which takes in these things that were passed in and sets them. So, quick rundown of the big things, but the functions that we're here to actually um, learn about are render and um, update. Now, since this game object doesn't really need to do anything yet, um, Interestingly, update doesn't need to do anything at all. So um, there's nothing really special about what 
like what this thing is actually going to be doing in the scene or anything so I'm just gonna say that its update is nothing if you wanted to take behavior from um, in assignment 3 um, and do something with it uh, yeah you totally could you could make a subclass of named object called planet you could create a subclass called star and you could definitely make the planets like gravitate toward stars you could put that together I'm not gonna go that far this time around because I'm mostly interested in just grouping these things together but the render function is the one that I think is interesting here because if you remember from assignment 3 um, our assignment 3 class Remember doing this weird thing that we had to do to like shift the texture over so that it actually renders sort of at the center of where the body is? Um, well, let's pack this into the rendering um, function here. Um, that that seems like it would be a little a little cleaner. Um, so what I'm gonna do is handle the sort of transformation into render space for this body in here so if you remember you've got the physics position at the position of the body right and the render position is the mvp matrix which we are assuming is going to be passed into this render function when it's called and we're also getting a renderer so these things are the things that we need in order to actually like render this thing out and then um, I'm going to dump these these things in here now. Okay, so again, my version is slightly different. So um, I'm going to convert these to the sort of form that they show up um, in our version here. And. I assume it's probably just SDL texture. Indeed it is. Right. So, now... Oh, that's true. I'm... I have a render function in texture here that, um, that could do just this. Um, I believe my version, I made this slightly more complicated than, than I have here. So, um, actually, yeah, why don't I, um, why don't I trim this down just slightly? Um, cause yeah, I copied all this additional stuff in, but I can make this simpler than, than this was. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's use the textures render. Um, so I have this render position, which I can use. And I have the textures width and height, which I can use. Make use of those. And, um... That's kind of all I need. Why well, get complicated? So now what this means is that by default, when I call render on a game object, it will draw the texture centered to the position of the body. If you wanted that to be different, you could just make that different. You could tell it to render however and wherever you want. Um, if you wanted to use the big beefy render functions to, like instead of doing the basic render that's offered through texture, you could do something complicated. You could apply effects. You could do a whole bunch of stuff here if you wanted to. Um, that's up to you. Oops. There we go. All right, so I'm going to leave that as it is for now. Um, and then the last thing that I want to do is go back into um, assignment three and sort of convert these things to uh, the form that I have them now. Um, so for this I'm going to make myself a planet object and um, I'm gonna make myself a star object I guess um, unsurprisingly I'm going to need to bring um, game object into the mix here so I'm gonna go grab that so I now have these things so you see that I'm I'm going to just separate this line apart. Just because that kind of feels like the last thing to me. Um, so, I'm creating 
I'm creating a body here um, and I'm adding it to the world. Now, so I want to hold on to this because I need to be able to provide these things to the object, right? So um, I want to initialize, or my mistake, I want to create a new one. A new game object. So I have this fourth constructor here that I've just gone down to. So it takes a scene pointer, body pointer, texture pointer. Okay, so easy enough. The scene is this, right? Like, because it is the assignment itself. And this is a pointer by default, so that's no problem. We can pass it planet body. And we can pass it the texture. Now, because I left texture to not be a pointer in this context, you would have to do this. So, um, why isn't it like this? Oh, because it's planet texture, of course. Right. So, uh, yeah, if you leave that dereferencing off or the referencing off, you will have an issue. It will complain in a different way, saying that no instance of the constructor matches the arguments, which is true because it's expecting a pointer here and it's not getting one. Um, so there's two ways that you can come at this. Um, we can leave this thing alone uh, or we can turn it into pointers. I'm going to convert this into pointer form the way that I had um, just because um, like I think that ends up kind of looking the nicest. Um, but there's all kinds of reasons that you might do one or the other. So it uh, depends on your circumstances and sort of what, what you need. So if I create the texture, create the body, um, and then this way I don't um, reference it, I just need to pass it directly in. So then I'm creating planet object. I'll do the same thing for the star. Um, so I want to have the texture set up in the same way. And this one takes star texture and it takes star body. Cool. So those things are set up. And then there's only sort of a um, a minor change to how we might go about doing um, doing this work later. I'm holding on to the body. Um, I guess the texture. I don't need to actually hold on to those of if I don't want to. Um, oh yeah, it's wise actually. Just it's useful to keep all of these objects because you're going to use all of them plenty anyway. So despite that you really only need to hold on to the game object, it's useful to hold on to these things. For example, the star texture, it's useful to hold on to because if you create more than one star, uh, you may want to use that star texture in a couple locations rather than creating fresh ones every time because uh, that's a good way to eat up a lot of memory. Um, so really nothing about our update changes because we're still just applying forces to the planet's body. That's simple enough. Um, but our render slims down a bunch. Um, so our render now, because um, we're planet object, we're just talking about the planet object. Um, now we... Sorry, one sec. Let me set this up in a way that works nicely. So the renderer. Um, yeah, we're going to have to pass it a couple things. So for one, we're going to need the MVP matrix. Um, but we need also the renderer, which comes from game. window or can I do this without the renderer can I get that from the texture I think I can let me look this up um, nope not what I was looking for uh, sure doesn't hurt to, to check into this and see if maybe I can make this nicer to uh, to work from 
so texture does of course have a render uh, why wouldn't it yeah um, well then I can make game objects render nicer um, let's make it just take the MVP matrix that it needs to render with and that's it that's nicer I like that better yeah it doesn't even use it within its function so why would it um, that was an artifact of my more complicated way of doing this. So if we're just using the texture to render, then um, easy peasy. All right, great. Uh, so when I go back into my assignment over here, um, I should be able to drop that out entirely and just call planet object dot render and pass oh planet object arrow render and pass my MVP matrix in. Don't need to do any work there. And oops. Copy, do the same for the star. Oh, star, object. So my render is now very simple here. Um, these have been converted into pointers, so we need to give these arrows. So those are now cleaned up, lovely. Um, yeah, so now also remember that these are sort of rendered in the order that you want to see them. So by this sort of way of doing things, the star will render on top of the planet because it's rendering most recently. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, so, okay, at this point, I think that's probably a good shot to run this and we'll probably be finishing up in just a moment. There's a couple of other little nice things that you can do in here, but it's not super important. So anyway, we're back to sort of the same, same old, same old, right? Great. So um, there was a couple of other little things that would be kind of nice to show off, and I'm just going to sort of drop them in quickly and not discuss them too much, but um, I made this thing up um, that was... Um, Uh, well, I guess this render object is really not important given how we have this thing set up. Um, but yeah, so there's these couple little things that I put together that it, I thought were um, kind of helpful. Um, it's nice to have this function just to be able to set camera bounds directly because having to paste this in everywhere that you want to adjust the MVP matrix this is kind of annoying thing. So like right here where we're setting up the MVP matrix, we could instead call set camera bounds and just sort of pass uh, pass these things in and uh, it should take care of it. That's that. And um, yeah, and uh, load texture. Um, not that that's really super important. I think the set camera bounds one is probably the most useful one of the bunch. Um, but I mean, again, it's, you know, changes a couple lines of code. Uh, just makes it a little bit more clear, but that's about all I was going for. So anyway, um, I'm just going to run that one more time, make sure everything's still good. Um, never hurts to run more time, one more time, and see if everything's still good. So anyway, um, I hope that gives you a little bit better of an idea sort of how to structure out um, a whole game. Um, that's it. Like this is the sort of end of this subject on on assignment three. We're soon going to be talking about assignment four, um, and so this is what it looks like to put together a reasonably complete sort of minimal game framework. There's still a lot more that could be put in here. There's, you know, um, we don't really have a camera yet. We don't have handling for sound or controls or those sorts of things, sort of specifically, um, but. Um, yeah, we've kind of got everything that we need in order to do kind of like basic physics and rendering. Um, and um, it's pretty well organized too. So anyway, I um, hope that gives you a, a sort of good feeling about, uh, about all, how all this is all going. And um, I'll see you in the next one.